Stadium in Miami. The excitement brewing here in South Florida as a moment ago the Dolphins starters were introduced to this home crowd. They're fired up as well as they get set to match up with Matt Ryan and the Atlanta Falcons. is underway on EA Sports. Fielded just outside the goal line. And a nice job there on special teams to limit him to inside the 15 as he's dropped at the 14. A first and ten at the 14 yard line. They fake the handoff. Now Tua. They're complete. This is Albert Wilson. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. Play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. Now Tua. Forced out to his left. And he wisely will throw that one away. Well, this defense, Charles, really played well in that win a week ago. It was a little bit enlightening talking with the defense coordinator about their performance last week because the feeling was that it was a good, solid performance. They did what they needed to do to get the job done and get the win but definitely a few lapses that they're looking to correct. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Looking to pass to him. And this would complete to Will Fuller. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. So Tua making the completion there. You know, what's different about playing a left-handed quarterback like him? And specifically, I guess, what does this defense need to try and take away? I'll take the first part that you asked about being left-handed. We've got to find out if he can move to his right and still continue to be accurate. So I want to push him in that direction and see if he can get his body squared around and make those throws that he's used to making. The next part is he's a dart thrower. Loves those short to intermediate routes first. Sit on those and make him throw the deep ball. Not that he's not capable, but you want him to prove it to you first. So the defense able to get off the field here on third down. And it's one of the goals of the game. They've got to be effective on passing downs. It's one of the few things defenses chart. How did we do on third down? That's a nice start for them in this one.
No, oh, big decision here early. Look at this. They're going to go for it on their own side of the field. Tua on fourth down. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. A surprising move here on the opening drive of the game, and the Falcons will take control of the football in great field position. to this football game. Back-to-back -back plays yield turnovers in this first quarter. So there's not much flow right now. A very choppy game. And I know this. It's a copycat league. We say it all the time about the NFL, but I'm not quite sure this is what they had in mind about something they wanted to emulate. No, you don't want to emulate a turnover. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. And this offense last time turned it over, went for it on fourth, didn't get it. They're lucky, though, because no points against the team on the board, but we'll see how they respond. Yeah, they've got to get a lot of credit to their defensive teammates, don't they? They had their backs on that last series, and because they did so, that allows the coach to still stay aggressive on offense and maybe go for it again in a similar situation. I was say, maybe makes that offense feel good when you know you've got a defense making stands like that. Yeah, that'll loosen up things a little bit, won't it? Maybe you'll play a little bit better the next time you have the ball. Second and 16. Going to the air, Tugabailoa. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap and he locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well and that one's incomplete. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Two are going to throw. Eluding the pressure right. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Well, they've got man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone. And there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion. This will be fielded at the 17. Such an impressive in the early lead. They get the stop defensively, force the punt. They score without their offense even stepping on the field. I remember playing and playing on special teams and teasing the guys on offense. Like, look, you know, you don't even worry about it. You got to just hang out over there. We'll bring this one all the way back and get the points we need. In this case, they actually got that done. From the 10. And they will wrangle it down a couple yards shy of the 30. First down Miami as they get set to start the drive. And they are winners of two straight games as they have climbed back to 500 now on the season. And you and I both know that this can be a tough team to figure out sometimes because I remember a few weeks ago, you and I having a conversation 
but we both thought that this was a season that could get away from them pretty quickly. Obviously not. Brandon, we saw these defenders flying to the football in their win last week, and nothing has changed. They're still moving around quickly and forcing incompletions. Back to the air on second down, tongue of Iloa. That's complete to his tight end, Mike Kosicki. And he gets this one just shy of the 40 to mark him down at the 39. For a tight end, he's got good straight line speed, and on that route, he's often the guy that gets overlooked. Nice job there, finding him in stride for really good yardage. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. They went with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field have covered up essentially every blade of grass. That's allowed them to disrupt the play. Two and a try again on second down. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. My first thought is surprise because that's one of the better tight ends around, and I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion? So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Two on a throw again. And incomplete on the deep ball. This offense has definitely been slow getting out of the gate. It's almost like they missed their wake-up call for this one. No points on their first two possessions, and now it's looking like none on this one either. The three straight incompletions, they don't care. That hasn't dissuaded them. They're going to go for it on fourth. They're going for it. Here's Tua with it. He's going to air one out. And that is knocked away in the middle of the field and incomplete. A surprising move to go for it. Predictably, at least somewhat predictably, it doesn't pay off. And it'll be a turnover on downs. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. And they're able to get this one past the 30 to the 25-yard line. All right, I got to ask you, with these RPOs, essentially the quarterback has three options, right? So what's different from that versus the triple option that we see the service academies run at the college level? As a general rule, the triple option at the college level most things are called outside of the quarterback faking it to the runner and then keeping it himself and maybe having a trail back. What I mean is, in the NFL, that option to throw the football all comes about organic. And he is into the end zone for a Falcon touchdown. Trenton Cannon, his first touchdown on the year. And the Falcons are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. Now Young Way Koo for the extra point. And we'll see if this rain affects the team's decisions going forward, but they kick it here, and it's good. Following the touchdown, here's Koo to kick off. Fielded right around the eight. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. And last time this unit was out here, costly turnover, and then that turned into six points. They've got to make amends. And how many times have we sat in meetings with coaches and they use the term complimentary football? <laughs> offense take care of the defense, defense take care of the offense. That didn't happen on the last possession. This is a chance for them to pick themselves back up and help their team. Yeah, we'll see if they can recoup and recover. They'll try and run for it with Lindsey. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. 
Well, you're down early. How do you get back in the game? Maybe establish the run. I think they're trying to do that. Now I'm with you on that one. And what I like about the message is that there's no panic from the head coach. He's already told his offensive coordinator, let's run the football. Let's get things settled down a little bit and find our way back into this game. On play action, here's Tua. Got a man open. That's Devontae Parker complete. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. Fourteen nothing the score. This is the NFL on EA Sports. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. On the handoff, it's Gaskin. And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. So after the loss of a yard, they'll look to push forward here on second down and 11. Throwing now is Tungavailoa. Wilson's got it complete. That catch good for five. It's third down. Timing is so important on a route like this because he's going to line up out right then cut straight across the field. I think the ball might have come out a counter two too late because by the time he was able to secure it, not much of a chance to turn it upfield. Now the Dolphins going to burn the first of their timeouts. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this second quarter. The Dolphins on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This will be third and six. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. And it's caught over the middle. Wilson. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 25-yard line. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half. I like their countenance. I like the way that they haven't panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They're starting to move the ball. And what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. They'll run now with Gaskin. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. A nice substantial run there by Gaskin, who was the Dolphins' leading rusher in 2020. 584 total yards in just seven starts and got stronger as the season went on. Not bad for a seventh-round pick in 2019. He was drafted number 234 overall that season. And he takes us down to about the 12 for a gain of three. And the last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Here's Tua. Caught by Wilson. That catch good for five. It's third down. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. This is Gaskin on the carry. And he will take it in. Front offense touchdown. Miles Gaskin. His second touchdown on the season. And the Dolphins able to get this back within a touchdown. The point after threw the raindrops up and good. And that'll cut the lead down to a touchdown. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. He will return this from deep in the end zone. And not a great return here. He'll make it back only to the 10-yard line. Anytime you feel the kickoff inside your own end zone, you've got to be decisive about whether you're bringing it out or not. Sometimes that indecision can really cost you. That may have been what happened on that play. About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons offense at the line. And they were winners the last time they took the field, which was two weeks ago. They had the open week last week, so this is a squad that should be really refreshed and ready to roll. 
would agree because when you get that open week after a victory, it does wonders for everyone. Obviously, your body get a chance to heal up, but your mind as well. You feel good about winning, so now you can get away from it for a few days, put down the playbook, you know, turn off the film, just be you, enjoy that time away, and then you come back ready to go. They'll run on first down. It's Patterson, and he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. We've hit the two-minute mark of the second quarter, 14 to seven. A reminder, coming up at halftime, we'll send you up to Orlando. Jonathan Coachman is there, and he'll have stats and scores from a busy Sunday in the NFL. Off the play fake, here's Ryan. They'll roll him out right. On the run, he'll let this go deep right side. And that's caught inside the 35. Oh, boy, you ain't got no feet. Falcons. And the Falcons push further out in front. That's a pretty quick response to that last touchdown drive. It seemed like they had maybe given up momentum. Well, not so fast. No, not at all, because they end up pushing the lead up once again, and you're exactly right. Thought momentum might have been shifting. Instead, they grabbed old Mo, didn't let him get to the opposite sideline. Following the touchdown, here's Koo to kick off. From the 10. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. First down Miami as they get set to start the drive. And this not an easy situation. You're down early, in the elements, you're on the road. How do you get the mojo back? Well, one thing is to remember that as an offensive player, you have a much better idea of what you're trying to accomplish and where you're trying to go than the defender. So in this case, because you know it, you can make your cuts with a little more decisiveness, maybe a second fake, some double moves, things of that nature, to go ahead and try and put some pressure on the defense. To his throw, taken in here by Fuller. The Dolphins going to take their second timeout as they'll get a chance to talk it over after picking up the first down. Tua now on first down. And he's got his tight end. It's Mike Gesicki. And yeah, he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. They really love to get him into one-on-one -on -one opportunities. And this is one way. Work him out of the slot and create a mismatch. Who's going to cover him? Corner? Safety? Linebacker? He's got a way to beat all of those positions. Line of scrimmage. The 31 now on first and 10. Tongue of Iloa working out of the gun. He's going to air one out. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Picked off by Fabian Moreau. And the Falcons are going to have it here at their own 32-yard line. CD, I know it's just his second year in the league as a quarterback, but that's going to be one when he flips on the tape. He's like, ah, I shouldn't have thrown that ball. No doubt about it, and his coaching staff will be emphatic about he shouldn't have thrown that ball. But remember, second year, as you noted, on the job training so he's got to take this feedback that he's getting negative or otherwise and turn it into positives moving forward about set to begin their next drive the falcons offense at the line they're going to start to drive here on the ground with patterson found a little room there as he's up to about the 37. give him five on the carry there and it'll be second down They run the counter, Cannon, and this winds up a gain of four to the 41. Now the Falcons gonna use one of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. I see an extra defensive back on the field, a little surprise here on third and one. They'll run with a former Tar Heel, T.J. Logan. And he is going to have a Falcons first down as they're able to convert on third and short yardage with a gain of four. Play action. 
action. It's Ryan. Rolling to his right. On the run, he'll let this go deep right side. And that is incomplete. Certainly no lack of aggressiveness here. They were hoping for the home run play to get them six points. They're hoping for a catch, maybe a call. But they figure they can at least get into field goal range with a completion. Play action, Ryan. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Xavier Howard. And a potential turning point as he'll get the football in very good field position late in this first half. So first thing that crossed my mind is why didn't they just sit on the lead and take it to the locker room? They're in good shape. Absolutely. And from this spot on the field, now you've given the other side a chance for points here going into intermission. Yeah, you changed the momentum of the game, and it's something you did not need to do. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And this is caught inside the five. Touchdown. Devontae Parker in the final seconds of the first half. And the Dolphins are able to cut into this lead in the final seconds of the first half. Extra point was hooking, but he does make it through. And that'll cut the lead down to a touchdown. Time enough for a kickoff here. Five seconds remaining in this first half. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons offense at the line. And with five seconds to go, this will likely be our final play. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. So we have reached halftime now with the visiting Falcons out on top as we send you up to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Set to continue as we are underway in the second half. Now this is going to be returned from the back line of the end zone. And they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line. So the same result that he opted for the touchback. set to begin their next drive the Falcons offense at the line and Charles they got the lead I would imagine the overall halftime tone was a positive one but what do you think the talking points were in the locker room well there were three talking points of the half partner all of them were about turnovers because they were pretty loose with the ball otherwise this lead could be even bigger now I don't think that they overly harped on it but I think they told them guys if you want to keep calling those plays that are exciting You've got to take care of the ball. Otherwise, we may have to dial things back a little bit. To throw again on second down. Ryan, throw out right, taken in by Patterson. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. Caught that look from you there, partner. I think we're on the same page on that one. Just his first catch. I think we both thought he'd be a little more active in the passing game. Let's see if that's the start of them trying to get the ball to him a little bit more here in the second half. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. Brandon, they're still in the lead, but momentum's certainly been going the opposite direction. So to me, that's a really important pickup there on third down. Try and regain some confidence, and you're right. They need to stem the tide a little bit. That certainly helped. On first down, Patterson. 
Room to run past midfield. And he'll get this down to the 39-yard line. 57 yards rushing for him now, and he's carried the ball just five times. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. On first down, nothing opening up really on the running play. Give him maybe a yard, and it'll be second down. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. On second down now, it's Davis. And he's able to get most of what he needed on the carry there. Seven yards on the gain, and it's third and two now. What a luxury to have a guy like this who can not only spell your starter, but can come in and keep drives going. On third down, it's Patterson. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive, because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense getting a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. Jet sweep. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. It's a gain of 11, and the Falcons pick up the first. Boy, an effective play there, getting their wideouts involved in the run game. And what they're always hoping on that type of a play, that they can get to the end of the line and have a chance to turn it upfield as he did there. That means they controlled the blocking and took care of the defensive end of the outside linebacker to give him that lane. And I guess I need to clarify, I said getting their wideouts involved in the run game, but of course that was actually a pass as he popped it forward. No gain there as he kept it himself at second down. Tackle made at the line, so they're converging well on the football now. An important play right here, third and ten. And I would expect pressure here. They go play action now, Ryan. And he'll complete this one to Patterson. And they'll lose yardage here, knocked back to the 19-yard line. They'll wind up losing a couple yards here on the play, and that's going to make it fourth down. And his kick is good. And that will extend their lead even further. So put another three on the board, all things considered, a good opening drive to begin the third quarter. And as a defense, the way that this game is going, you're excited to see those points go on the board. Gives them a little bit of leeway to play with when they're out on the field, but they're real excited to see their offense score. Now they get to go out there and do their part. Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. And their deficit a little wider now than it was at halftime following the field goal a moment ago. But the goal is still the same because you know they want to come out, establish a rhythm in the second half and get going. Make no mistake about it though, kicking field goals, not in their game plan. They need to get the ball in the end zone. It's a nice completion and a little bit of run after catch as well to create the yardage that they got. But it is so tough to cover that route, the drag route, because they run it at varying speeds because the key is to create hesitancy on the defender's part. Always so empathetic for those DBs, aren't you? And that's off the mark, incomplete. We've got to give out a little applause on that play. It has to go to the defense. More good work by them. They've taken away the passing lanes all game long, and you can see the frustration that it's causing because he just about threw that one into the first row. 
This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Here's Gaskin, and he brings this up to the 46, good enough for the first. Three quarters, A Sports. First down, Tonga Bailoa. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 at the 37 yard line. Tua sets up to pass it. Here's Fuller with a catch. And he'll head out of bounds inside the 10. Mark him down at the 9. Well, every drive from here out is definitely crucial and critical. They know that they need to get at least three here to get it back to a one-score game. But I can't imagine that in their huddle that they think, touchdown, Dolphins! A great play there. His second touchdown on the season. And the Dolphins have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. Sanders now to add the extra point. It's up and good, and this now becomes a 24-21 ball game. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. This taken in at the goal line. And he'll decide to not bring this one out as their drive will begin at the 25. set to begin their next drive the Falcons offense at the line that last touchdown has made this really tight they're clinging now to this slim lead what the Jesus second half they only have a field goal this offense needs to kick it into gear and right now I'm looking directly at the field general at the quarterback this to me he's got to take over right now by word pumping his team up and then of course by deed with his play my high school coach used to say that all the time laddie Take over by word and deed. And deed means action. Exactly. And he puts his head down and gets up to the 42 for a gain of about six. Now I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. And he'll get it out to midfield. Let's see, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. Brandon, sometimes it just comes down to the power of suggestion because I know exactly what they said all week long. We're coming off the open week. We'll have the fresher legs in the fourth quarter, and they will wilt when we get to that point. And right now, it appears that they're thinking that exact thing. Yeah, offensively, they had the bye last week. Defensively, did not. Is that really a big factor? Is that more talk during the week? I think the more that you talk about it, the more that you emphasize it, the more sometimes it comes true for your team. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. From midfield now, here's Ryan. Throw right side, caught by Ridley. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. Here's 
Tolison. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. I'll tell you, far from ideal conditions to play in, but neither offense has had much trouble. Plenty of points to go around. First and 10. A first down carry for Davis. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Now the objective there, I mean, yes, the positive gain, that's nice, but work some clock. Yeah, you're exactly right, but the problem for them is still within a possession, so they can't just sit on it running the ball. They'll have to find a way to throw it effectively as well. Now left side on the swing pass. And some space here, and they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. Well, probably the only thing he did wrong there was go out of bounds, nursing this fourth quarter lead. You want to stay in, eat the clock. Yeah, you got to love the effort, the catch, the extra yardage, but you got to know the situation. Stay in bounds, young man. And they'll get him down right around the 16. And his defense here going to burn their second timeout. But you can also factor in another timeout that they'll get when the clock stops at the two-minute warning. Second and eight coming up. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And now here comes the third of their timeouts defensively. So they'll be left with only the two-minute warning to stop it from here on out. One of the bigger plays in the game thus far. The crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. Here comes the end around as Ryan will just leave this for his wide out. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. Well, they tried to catch him by surprise, I think, there with that little pop pass on third down, but no luck. You're right about no luck, but I did like the idea. I like the thought process. Make an unconventional call on third down sometimes. It can pop big. In this case, it didn't. Certainly some pressure here on Young Way Koo. He hit his first, this one from 40 yards out. And this is going to be no good. He missed it off to the left, and this score will stay right where it is. Maybe an important fourth quarter miss as this stays a three-point game. Yeah, now overtime is very much in the equation here. Just what you mentioned, a three-point game, they get a drive, put it through the post. We could have some free football, couldn't we? Meanwhile, to his throw here, going to be caught by Wilson. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and 10. Now Tua. Into a double team and it's intercepted. Picked off by Rodney McLeod. And the Falcons have just about sewn up this football game. When you talk about making winning plays, that is a winning play at this stage of the game to come up with that interception, huge. I like how you identified that because most people think winning plays are the offense trying to get it done. In this case, nursing a lead, they found a way to make a play on that side of the ball and maybe finish things off. The Falcons in victory formation as they take an knee. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right, just us against the world and get it done, <laughs> how happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something. And they, <laughs> they talk so much about the turnover battle, determining who wins, who loses. This game, no exception. Air-free football, no turnovers at all, and they win it. So this is one you don't have to convince your team that what you're saying is accurate. And you know what I'm talking about. Head coach always stands up in front of the team and says, guys, if we do this, this, and this, we'll win. And usually they say, if we win the turnover battle, we'll win. Well, here's the proof right there. Win the turnover battle, go on to victory. Now the guys believe you move on to the next lesson where you have to convince them this one is now planted. 
So for Atlanta, their good start continues as they get their record up to four and two. And they'll return home next week to take on the Carolina Panthers. Meanwhile, for Miami, they fall a game under the 500 mark at three and four through seven games. And they'll try to get back on track next week as they head up to Orchard Park to take on the Buffalo Bills. And for Charles Davis and our entire crew, I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports.